ESPN College Football. Today it is a Mountain West Conference matchup between the UNLV Rebels and the Utah State Aggies. Hi everybody, Mike Corey, Reedy and Golia. Welcome to Logan, Utah. UNLV 1-2 and two in the Mountain West. Utah State 1-1 one and one, coming off a loss last Saturday, 16-13 at Colorado State. And in the process, they lost their second string quarterback in Daryl Garrettson. He broke his right wrist on this play in the third quarter. And he is going to be out for quite some time. So it is now down to the third string quarterback in Craig Harrison. He will get the start today, the senior. For more on that, let's go down to the field. Reedy standing by with Utah State head coach Matt Wells. Coach, down to your third quarterback this season. How is the team rally behind Craig Harrison this week? Craig's second career start, and what does Craig have to do to be successful today? Well, the first thing he's got to do is take care of the ball and distribute it. You know, manage the game, I think, is the biggest thing. It, let the receivers make plays, and we got to find, obviously, find a way to run the football. Four and three, you're at the halfway juncture. What did you tell your kids in the locker room, and what do you have to do to get the win today? Well, we got to play championship defense, first whistle to the last whistle, and we got to rally around a new quarterback on offense, find ways to, to run the ball, and, and then he's got to manage the game. Great, Coach. Thank you. Good luck. Mike, back up to you. All right. Thanks very much, Reedy. So we shall see. What Utah State will do today with their third string quarterback and now for UNLV they had the week off as you look at Bobby Houck in his fifth season at UNLV they defeated Fresno State in overtime two weeks ago 30 to 27 Fresno State the defending champs out of the Mountain West so they've had an extra week here to get ready for Utah State today. He said it would be monumental if we were able to come here on the road and knock off this team with two big quality wins in the Mountain West back to back. It was Utah State that won the toss. They deferred, so they will kick off here to start. And there is Jay Mitchell and Keith Whiteley are back to return for UNLV. Reedy, nice work. Made it back up to the booth rather quickly I, I, here. I, I will tell you this, Mike. The air is definitely thinner up here <laughs> in Logan, Utah, and the stadium is very steep with no elevator. I, I wanted to give you a moment to catch your breath. I shouldn't have welcomed you in that quickly. Here's the opening kick, and we are underway in Logan, Utah, out of the back of the end zone. And UNLV starting first down and 10 at the 25 as we take a look at Blake Decker, the junior quarterback for the Rebels out of Mesa, Arizona. Transfer to Scottsdale Community College, and it's been no secret that he has really struggled this season. He's a good quarterback. He's mobile. He can hurt you with his feet. He just has to throw it to his players. Too many interceptions this year. Ten against only six touchdowns. We'll see if Blake can clean that up today. Last week, or I should say two weeks ago, in that win over Fresno State, he had one interception. Went off the shoulder pads of one of his receivers, so it wasn't as egregious, but... The previous weeks has not played well. They'll keep it on the ground in the first play of the game. Goes to Keith Whiteley for just one yard. And, and both these teams run spread offenses, and, and I think you're going to see both of them try to establish a running game early. You see UNLV starting off with a with a, uh, a lead out of the zone uh, to Whiteley. There are the numbers on Decker, as you just saw, the first junior college transfer to start at quarterback at UNLV since 1999. From the gun, play fake. To the outside of the pass, and he has Anthony Williams for the catch up across the 30 to the 32 yard line, pushed out by Jalen Davis. It's a five yard gain, bringing up third down and short. I mean, Decker shows you his arm strength there. He's on the far hash, he throws uh, the far side out and gets it there. But a good job by Utah State. Come up, make the tackle in front of you, and a big third down early in this game. Third down and three for the Rebels. On the season. 38% on third down. Decker, low snap. Pressure. He can't get away. He will be sacked. B.J. Larson on the sack for Utah State. And that's Larson's fifth sack on the season. You're going to take a look at it. He's on the right side of your screen right there as he gets upfield. Just beats the big offensive tackle. Brett Boyko to the outside with the sack. Right down there, you see Boyko, 69, big 6'7", 310-pound tackle. He's got to kick step back there faster. It's going to be a long day for him. B.J. Larson's a very good defensive end. Fifth sack of the season for Larson, and now it's Logan Yunker to punt here for UNLV. That was a loss of 13 on the sack. JoJo Natson is back to return for Utah State. He's going to let it go. 
And a pretty good kick is going to bounce out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. A 52 yard kick, no return. And here comes Craig Harrison, who you talked about, Rainey, at the start with head coach Matt Wells right there. We'll see what he can do. Listen, it's only his second career start, but he's 24 years old. He's a senior. He's been with uh, Coach Wells not only two years as Coach Wells as the head coach, but when Coach Wells was the offensive coordinator. So he's very familiar with Craig Harrison. So although he may be inexperienced on the field, he's inexperienced in life and with this team. The transfer out of Snow College. First opportunity on offense for the Aggies from their 29-yard line. Hand off to Lawan Hunt. And they said they're going to need a lot out of the running backs today. And naming Lee Hunt, who picks up five yards on his first career start, Correct. the true freshman. Yeah, he's a Florida kid. True freshman, as you said, Mike, 5'8", 185. He's got that second gear he can put it in. But what I really like about him, he doesn't dance around. He takes the handoff, and he hits the hole hard. Evident there on a five-yard run on first down. Good to get positive yardage on first down. Second and five, again on the ground. This is Nick Vigil, and Vigil has some space, goes right up the middle of the field, and into UNLV territory. Tracked down at the 35-yard line by Penny Vea. That's a 31-yard gain. Yeah, don't check your sets. He is a linebacker, but he's also an all-state tailback in high school. You see how he hits the hole, bounces it to the outside. Great vision by Nick Vigil. Turns it upfield, and a huge gain for the young man, who you will see all over the field today on both sides of the football. So a huge run by Vigil gets it down to the 35 of UNLV, first and 10. Here he goes again. Vigil, another first down run of 10 plus yards, finally run out by Taj Hassan. That's a 12 yard game. You know, and talking to Coach Wells about playing Vigil both ways, you know, in that BYU game, he had 16 carries, 67 yards, 107 snaps in that game. He's obviously in great shape and is a great athlete. The only player to start on both sides of the ball in a game this season in FBS. That's pretty impressive. Two carries already, 43 yards for Vigil. Seems like he'll be used a lot today. The sophomore in a Plain City, Utah. First and 10, Aggies moving the football here on their opening drive of the game. Again, Vigil, this time he stopped. And in the backfield for a loss by Tao Lotulele, a loss of five. And you got to think, Rainey, that UNLV knows this is what Utah State yeah. has to do today. Well, they try to run a trap draw here. The lineman gets tied up. You saw there on the inside of your screen. So he was supposed to kick that defender out. No one there. But they're going to give it a lot to Vigil today. You know, uh, Coach Wells told us it's on him. He needed to give him the ball more in that Colorado State game. He said he wouldn't make that mistake today, and, and he's not. Yeah, force Harrison to beat you with his arm. The third string QB out of the shotgun here for the first time. Pressure off the edge, look out. Harrison gets rid of it, throws it, and it's incomplete. And major pressure from Sidney Hodge that time for UNLV forcing that pass. And you know, although it's incomplete, I think it's a good pass. He's got that little clock in his head and in his feet. He knows that blitz is coming, throws a very nice ball. It's incomplete, but I like the shot that Utah State took down the field. And I also like that UNLV's dialing up some pressure trying to get to Craig Harrison. Looking for one of their top targets, Hunter Sharp, but it was overthrown. Now third down and 15. Harrison now will step up. He's got the middle of the field wide open. He runs inside the 20. He's got a first down and push down near the 10. 17 yard run. And just good vision here by Harrison. You're going to have man to man coverage on the outside. He steps up in the pocket. No one's there. Takes it to the left and he picks up a nice block by wide receiver Hunter Sharp right there. The thing I like there about Harrison knew where the first down was, put his shoulder down and picked it up. Tremendous job by Craig Harrison. Not too much you know about this guy because he hasn't played all that much. Had one rush for 15 yards in one of the two ball games that he's played this year. Has a 17 yard run here for a first down. In motion sharp, but the handoff goes up the middle to Lawan Hunt and about two yards on a first down carry. Yeah, and I just right now like the way that Kevin McGiven, offensive coordinator, is easing Harrison into this game. We're, we're establishing a run game, getting it to Vigil, getting it to Hunt, 
pick and choosing his shots down the field. And right there, Harrison showed you the play before his athleticism to be able to scramble and pick up a first down. Brady, six rushes, one pass so far here in this opening drive for Utah State. Now it's Nick Vigil at the direct snap right to him as he goes to the five and gets inside the five to the three. Trying to track him down on the outside was Lotulele. Finally brought down by Penny Vea. It's a seven yard run. Just a strong kid. You see him in the wildcat here. Just as sweet. Watch him get that left arm out. Get that stiff arm out there, Nick. Good job. You don't see that enough today as he breaks the tackle and almost picks the first down up. But a strong kid when he's a running back. Interesting, you know, Coach Wells told us he talked to Jim Mora, head coach at UCLA, about how he used Miles Jack and how we practiced with him. So kind of interesting that coaches talk to each other about their two way players. And so here we go now on the pistol. It's third down and one from the four yard line. Vigil on the carry. It will be close. It'll depend on the spot here. As it's been a steady dose on the ground. The ball came out at the end, but it looked like Vigil was down, is what they called. We'll see if he has enough for the first. Yeah, he's got to get to the two yard line. Good penetration by UNLV, and I think they stopped him short, but Coach Wells yep. did not hesitate one bit, Mike. He sent out his jumbo crew, and if it's me, 41 is getting the ball again. We shall see. Harrison, fourth and a yard, and it will be Vigil. Will he have it? Pushing forward, we don't know. It's going to be close, UNLV. Yeah, thinking they have gotten to stop here. He's got it, Mike. I think the headline judge came in, got a left foot spot. You know, we have an angle here. All he has to do is get the ball to the plane of the two yard line. Right there, a good push, good shoulder length. From that angle, you don't see the ball, but I believe he broke where the two yard line was right there. Yep. And I think they're going to get this uh, first down. They're going to measure it. It's going to be close, but let me see if I can go one for one. I think he's going to have it by about six inches. This is going to be close. Vigil. Yeah, let me rephrase that. Probably about two inches. Oh, he short. He's going to be short. UNLV gets the stop. Inside of the three yard line, they hold and they will take over. And we will come back right after this. Eight and a half to go. First quarter from Logan, Utah. Rebels back on offense when we return. Nick Vigil, 41 for Utah State, stays on the field. He ran the ball six times for 45 yards in the opening drive. He plays defense. He's the outside linebacker. He wasn't able to pick up the first, though, at the two-yard line of UNLV. Defense holds, so the Rebels take over on their second offensive series of the game. Blake Decker to the outside. Nice toss, just unable to haul it in was Anthony Williams, and good coverage back there by the Aggies' Daniel Gray. Let's take a look at that fourth down play, Reedy. Well, he's got to get to the two-yard line. You see a good shoulder lean there. Now you lose the football. Right here, the pile's still moving. Right there, he's still moving forward. I think he gets past the line to gain. It's just, if you're the headline judge, line judge, you're running in. You just can't see it definitively. Came up six inches short. Keith Whiteley is in the backfield for UNLV on second down. He gets the call. Not much. Trying to get some breathing room, the Rebels. Jordan Nielsen on the tackle for Utah State. That opening drive for the Aggies, Rainey, 10 plays, 68 yards. They ran the ball nine yeah. times, only threw it once you just, incomplete. You just got to score in the red zone, you know? They got stopped. Give UNLV credit. But one thing I will say, watching this Utah State defense on film, very aggressive, fly around to the football. Really like what I saw on film of this Utah, Utah State defensive unit. Third and nine for UNLV. They spread them out, two on each side, Whiteley in the backfield. Decker from the middle of his own end zone. He's going to run it out, but will not pick up the first. To be cut down at the 10-yard line by Siwa Tafau. It's a seven-yard pickup, though. They'll have to punt. Well, you, uh, talking about the hustle and running, Tafau, 91, is a defensive end. He's on the outside, right side of the screen as Decker breaks up. Watch 91 come flying. 
from his defensive end spot. That's the hustle that I'm talking about that this defense does, making plays. And just like that, three and out, Utah State will get the ball back with good field position. Yonker with his second punt today. Natson back to return, has it at the 45-yard line of UNLV, scoops it up, and is on the run. Now look, no, he is down, yep, the 45 when your knee is down. In college football, you're down, and that's where Utah State will have it when we return. Stay with us back after this. All right, so this is a couple weeks ago. UNLV, the game's tied at 27. They are taking on Fresno State. Jonathan Leva misses a 26-yard field goal as time expires to the Rebels. They could have won, so they go to overtime. It's fourth down. Brian Burnell of Fresno State throwing the pass just outside of the reach of Martez Waller. That could have been the go-ahead touchdown. Instead, UNLV gets it back. And Nikolai Bornan, 33-yard field goal for the game winner, 30-27. to And UNLV knocks off the defending champs out of the Mountain West, Fresno State, for a huge yeah. win two weeks ago. It, it was, and this is another big game for their program. Bobby Houck told us this would be another marquee win if they could come up here to Logan and beat Utah State. UNLV was leading that game as well, 17-0 to start the second half. Able to hang on for the win in overtime. Utah State back on offense. They keep it on the ground. This is Natson, and UNLV's all over him. Going to lose two yards in the play. Tao Lotulele in on the scene once again. Yeah, nice job by UNLV to stretch this out. Right there, JoJo Natson nines lined up in the backfield. Just a sweep play, but you will see Natson at wide receiver getting jet sweeps, and you will also see him in Wildcat. They really like the athleticism. JoJo Natson, junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now Joe Hill is in the ball game, the running back to the right of Harrison. Harrison, a quick little fake, pressure comes in, tries to dump it for the screen, and it's incomplete, looking for Hill. Pressure from CUA Vasa for UNLV defensively. Yeah, and Loda Lely was there as well, 55, the middle linebacker, really uh, read and recognized that screen very well, and Harrison just had to throw it sooner than he wanted to, but so far, good defense by the Runner Rebels. Third down and 12, Utah State. Harrison looking for Hunt, and it's incomplete. That went behind yeah, that's a Hunt, fumble, and that, you're right, and that's going to go out of bounds at the 44-yard line. They're going to lose yards and fourth down on the way. And, you know, and the decision's okay by Harrison. He just has to gather himself and complete that pass. But clearly, you're going to see right now, he's at the 46-yard line, and watch the pass. Goes clearly back to the 45, towards the 44. Good call by the line judge. Had that hand, left hand out there, signifying that it was a lateral and a big loss for Utah State on that play. Loss of eight, Jaron Bentrude is on to punt this one away, and Jay Mitchell back to return for UNLV. It's fourth and 20. Mitchell lets it go over his head and it bounces into the end zone takes a UNLV bounce a 56 yard kick and the Rebels back on offense when we return no score from Logan Utah you ready for this later tonight Bo Wallace and the unbeaten Ole Miss Rebels into Death Valley to take on the LSU Tigers it's ESPN college football primetime Presented by Hampton Hotels, number three, number 24. How about it, Rini? What do you think? Dare I say it? I like LSU tonight. You know, for them to lose twice in Death Valley on uh, Saturday night, I don't think it's going to happen. UNLV on offense and Shaquille Murray Lawrence on the run for a couple. Make it three. Brought down by Zach Vigil. That's Nick Vigil's brother, Zach, the inside linebacker, Nick on the outside. Yeah, everybody had game day today. Well, of course, they were at LSU, listen, so it's real tough. I think if LSU, LSU you. can establish a running game with Leonard Fournette and their other backs and keep the ball away from Bo Wallace, they have a good chance of winning the game. So we'll see. Blake Decker out of the shotgun for UNLV on second down. Pressure. The blitz is on. He gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Intended for Devontae Boyd, his true freshman wide receiver. Decker took a shot. Oh, and there you saw the blitz dialed up from defensive coordinator Todd Orlando. We talked to him yesterday. He's an aggressive style coach. Utah State runs a 34 base defense, but they move their guys around a lot. 
around a lot, excuse me, and they will blitz Blake Decker a, a, a tremendous amount of times today. Just three total yards on offense for UNLV. And we have movement in our first flag of the afternoon. False start. Number 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. It's on Nick Estrain, the junior out of Irvine, California. Greg Burks, our referee today here in Logan, Utah. And, and that's what happens when you have an aggressive defense uh, and a fast defensive front. You, those offensive linemen, they want to get out of their stance a little quicker uh, before the snap starts, and you get, you get some false starts. Third down and 12, Decker. And nobody home on that pass, and Kendall Keys fell down was upset with himself the other true freshman wide receiver both Boyd and Keys have seen a lot of yeah. time this year due to the injury of Devontae Davis their top wide receiver who's I don't think is going to see action today although we did see him kind of warming up a little bit on the and, sideline and yeah and as many injuries as Utah State has had you know ditto ditto for UNLV as we look at Davis there has a hand injury but it's tough for a quarterback too so some of that you know a lot of the blame goes to Decker it's tough when you don't have all your receivers. Natson on the return gets up to the 44-yard line after a 43-yard kick, a five-yard return. And we'll see if Utah State can break this scoreless tie when we come back. Another big week here this week, you know. I mean, this is where this is where it gets real exciting. Tuesday, the committee comes out with their first uh, top 25 poll. Uh, I think a lot of people will be sitting on pins and needles after this weekend to uh, to see that first uh, first poll. No score here in Logan, Utah. Aggies on offense. Vigil for maybe a yard, and the Rebels defense is all over. It's stacked up. No gain officially on a first down carry. So it's been Nick Vigil on the ground today because that was the 12th rush out of 14 offensive plays. You see the total yards, 59 yeah. to minus two for UNLV. And, and that was one of the keys Coach Wells and Coach Kevin McGiven, the offensive coordinator, told us established a run. So listen, they're going to it and they're getting yards. They just need to score some points here. Harrison on the pass and a short pickup. Picked up by Lawan Hunt, and that'll be a five-yard gain. Mike Horsey, defensive back on the tackle for UNLV. Yeah, watch this real nice tackle by 32, Mike Horsey. If he doesn't make this tackle, there's a lot of green grass in front for Hunt to run. Good job by the free safety to come up and make that hit. Third down and five for Utah State. Motion man, Hunter Sharp. Dangerous threat on the outside. Harrison finding his tight end, though. It's Jefferson Court, and he has the first down. Court gets to the 44-yard line undercut by Sidney Hodge, but not before a pickup of seven. Well, a new quarterback's best friend is the tight end. Watch, he's going to be coming from the left side of the screen, just a crossing route. Jefferson Court, 6'3", 240. Nice throw, nice catch, and that's the way to get the chains moving. Court began his career at BYU. Now here is a senior at Utah State. Fourth catch of the season, and the drive will continue. Hunt to the backfield, play fake to him, and the pass to the outside is caught by Ronald Butler, and a flag is down at the end as Butler gets inside the 40 to the 38. It's a six-yard pickup, Kenny down. Keys. Here's the Rubber call. Pass, number four, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. It is first down. You can see right there, Sidney Hodge, four right coming at him. Just one step too many. He needs to lay off there. You know, player safety is paramount. The official standing right there. He needs to know at that last moment, you can hit him, but you better you better put those hands off and chest bump him. Right. He kind of drove through him, and the official's going to throw that every time. Real tough, though, you know, Randy, when you're coming to full speed I know. like that. But, you know, the game has yep. changed. It's evolved, you know. Five years ago, that would have been a great hit on the quarterback. Today, it's a 15-yard penalty. Hodge salivating at that one, but gets called for the penalty, so it's down to the 23-yard line. And a keeper by Harrison after he faked it to Natson, and Harrison gets inside the five. And saving a touchdown was Taj Hassan, a 19-yard run by the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, who knew Harrison was this agile? You're going to see he's going to fake speed sweep. It's a zone read. 
He could give it to JoJo Nats in number nine there. Instead, he pulls it out. He's reading the right defensive tackle. You saw that hole open up, and he just turns into a running back, gets those shoulders down, and picks up a nice first down. That's a great call by Harrison. He had a 17-yard run earlier, has a 19-yard run now, gets it to first and goal. Vigil behind him. It'll be Vigil. Vigil to the goal line, and he is stopped shy. No touchdown. Nick Vigil on the run. Kenny Keyes, defensive back in there to force him down just outside the goal line. Boy, Vigil really wanted this one here. Cutback, he's going towards it, and that is a phenomenal job by Kenny Keyes to come and lower the boom. That's keeping Nick Vigil out, 230-pound running back coming right at you. That's how you stop him. Nick Vigil with eight carries, 48 yards, looking for the end zone. They give it to him again, and again, UNLV defensively shuts him down. They stopped him earlier on a fourth down stop, and they might have to try to do it again. It's third and goal coming up. That UNL defense up front is, is very stout. You know, if I'm Kevin McGiven, offensive coordinator, you know what I do now? Get in that same formation, stick it in there, to Vigil, and then have Harrison pull it out, run a zone read. I bet you he walks in the end zone. I'm with you, Reedy. Under center. Here it is, the fake, and a dump pass caught. Touchdown, Jefferson Court. Take a look at it here. The tight end, she's going to release right there. Good rollout by the quarterback, Harrison. Just a nice little catch, throw and catch for the touchdown. Good play call, and, and that's what happens when you have a stout defense that's stopping the run in the middle. They're sending everyone there. A little play action, roll out, and nice pitch and catch for the touchdown. Jefferson Cord had his first ever career touchdown versus Wake Forest, and then after it, he tripped on Big Blue's motorcycle, he said, in the end zone after the play. It was a little awkward. This time, no tripping, easy catch for the touchdown. It's his second of his career, and a senior out of Sandy, Utah, has put Utah State on top. The pass from Craig Harrison, 7 0 Aggies. Craig Harrison and Utah State hitting the scoreboard first on a two-yard touchdown pass to Jefferson Court, 7-0 Aggies, Randy. It was a great play call. Again, when you have a team that says, like UNLV, we are going to stop the run, play action, something simple, roll him out, gives him a run-pass option. Harrison showed us he can run the ball. If, if his receiver's covered, his tight end, he runs it in. If the linebacker comes to him, he throws it exactly how you want that play to play out, and it did. Touchdown, Utah State. Utah State was moving the football. They just weren't able to get it into the end zone. They have 99 yards of total offense, 80 yards rushing. Here's another look well, at the TD. And that's what this play does. This is Kenny Keyes right there. He either has to go with the tight end that's going to come out here, or he has to come at the quarterback who is rolling out. He decides to go. It's a nice, easy pass for the touchdown. There goes Keyes right there. He decides to go after the quarterback. He's in no man's land. That's what that play does right there. And they've done that a lot today with the unbalanced line yeah. overloading one side, and it was a perfect play call. Well, and if Keyes drops back and takes the tight end court in man-to-man -man coverage, Harrison walks into the end zone. UNLV has to get something going here offensively. They have three yards of total offense, and this is their fourth offensive series of this first quarter. Decker sacked by Nick Mitchell. He's doing it on offense, and it's a fumble. And Utah State is going to recover. What a play. Offensively and defensively, Nick Vigil, and they force a fumble. Yeah, right at the bottom of your screen, 41, unblocked. And believe me, UNLV, you do not want to leave Nick Vigil unlocked like a missile to the quarterback. Boy, Decker never saw him coming. Blind side right away, the ball spurts free. And just like that, Utah State is back in business. And it was the big offensive lineman, Travis Seafell. Travis Seafell, who missed that block, got to pick it up. Seafeld actually picked up the fumble oh, I was for Utah State. That was the 20th forced turnover in the last seven games for Utah State. They are back in business now inside the red zone. Harrison stepping up. He's done this a lot. Can he run for the touchdown? 
Craig Harrison and trapped up. By Locha Lele, it's a 12-yard run. And again, not a called run. They're going to go play action, half roll him out to the right. He was going to look to the right. He was going to throw it back to the left. Coverage down the field, man coverage. Harrison's an intelligent guy, tucks it and runs, and they're first and goal. Clock winding down here on the first quarter. Coming up on a minute to play, first and goal, Utah State. Harrison is now split out wide as it's a direct snap to Vigil. And UNLV's ready for it. And how about the play of Lotu Lele? He has been everywhere so far defensively for UNLV, 55 in the red and white. Oh, and they're going to need him from that Will linebacker position, flying around sideline to sideline and making tackles because the one thing Utah State is going to do is run the ball. And I tell you, they are determined to get Nick Vigil a touchdown. But every time he runs the ball down to the goal line, they are stuffing it. Coming in first on the team with 54 tackles for Lotu Lele, including a sack and a forced fumble. Looks like UNLV defensively, they'll have to try to make up another big stand here. Here's Harrison rolling. Harrison, flag is down, he dives. But he is marked out at the two, will get the flag. He stepped out. Yeah, he actually got multiple flags on the play as well, Mike. Fifteen seconds to go in the first quarter. We'll get the call here from Greg Burks. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. And he didn't give the number there, but what that means is either a wide receiver should have been on the line of scrimmage and was in the backfield, or an offensive tackle, usually his head isn't. So you're going to see you got one, two, three, four, and five. He needs to be up on the line of scrimmage. That's what it is. You cannot have five guys in the backfield. That was what happened there. The wide receiver needed to step up, didn't do it. Both officials threw the flag, and that'll back up Utah State. And the Aggies trying to do so many different things offensively with their running backs and receivers to kind of help out Craig Harrison, the quarterback, who's making his first start here of the season. The third string quarterback for Utah State has done very well, though, with his legs and through the air with a touchdown pass to Jefferson Court, accounting for the only score. First quarter of the Bucks, back with a second after this.